When it comes to using your wedges, are you digging or are you picking? In today's video, I've got for you such a simple tip, but I guarantee it's gonna transform your short game. Make sure you check out this video. So when it comes to pitching, in my opinion, there's diggers and there's pickers. Which one are you gonna be? You can vary it for the shot you've got, but for the majority of time, we really wanna be picking the ball, using the loft of the golf club, using the bounce of the golf club. The majority of golfers I measure that are struggling with their pitching, they are de-lofting the golf club too much and taking the bounce off the golf club. Effectively, they are having their hands ahead at impacts, they're pushing their handle forwards, maybe they've got the ball further back, they're driving the club into the ground, taking the loft off and really taking the bounce off the golf club. The club is designed to mean that when we hit the ground, it glides, it skims, it doesn't dig, dig, dig. If you are digging in, your quality of contact, that ball turf strike is vital. It has to be perfect. Whereas if you're using the bounce of the golf club, Great news, you get away with it more. The majority of elite golfers on most of their pitch shots around the green, they are using the bounce of the golf club, letting the club work for them. It's a much simpler method. So now this is an exercise that I want you to do before you go and play. Most golf clubs have got some practice nets and around the, the mats that you hit off, there's gonna be some rubber flooring, I would have thought, that you could hit off. You could just grab an impact board, a lie board that your local pro shop driving range will have when they're testing out your lie angle of the golf clubs. So you could just use that and some tape on the bottom of the golf club. I'm just gonna use here some electrical tape. And I'm gonna just hit a, first of all, I'm just gonna make some swings but you can obviously hit some shots off the rubber flooring as well. Now this is just gonna help leave a mark on the golf club of where the club is striking the ground. Am I using the front edge, the leading edge of the golf club? Am I using the middle? Am I using the trailing edge? If you are a digger, you are definitely gonna be using more that front edge of the wedge. And that's gonna look something like this. They've generally, these players who do it, they've got the ball a bit further back, they've got the hands and their weight forwards, and they're going in more this way. And they're gonna drive the ball in low and it can look quite sexy if they get it right because the ball comes in to the green lower, there's more forward bounce before that spin is almost applied, before the ball's slowed down enough. But they're gonna struggle with distance control. Now there is a time and a place to play that shot. If you're out of a bare lie, if you're on a linksy hard type course, if you're into the wind, if you wanna drive that ball in, in, in low, fine play that style of shot. What you'll have seen there is I've very much dug out that front edge. I've, I've worn the tape away on the front of the wedge there. So I definitely went in with that leading edge. I would have definitely de the golf club. My guess is by at least 15 degrees, which means I've then taken this 10 degree bounce of golf club to minus five. So it's like going into a, like a knife edge. It's gonna dig, 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 dig. If I, use the wedges it's designed to be used and allow the club to catch up with my hands, which is the purpose of today's video, we start to use a very different part of the golf club. Now you can see that I've used way further back on that wedge. You can see the, the black rubber marking towards the trail edge of the golf club here, so much further away from the front edge of the golf club further back here, and that means I'm starting to use the loft in the bounce of the golf club. Now, what, so once you've done some of those without a golf ball, try it with a ball if, if you've got the chance to be able to do it. Get that feeling of using the loft, using the bounce of the golf club correctly. It has to be really blooming hard turf with no grass underneath before you start thinking about, I can't use any bounce on, on the wedge here. A lot of great golfers are actually starting to use more bounce on their wedges, not less. If they do have both, they'll generally have a lower bounce lob wedge and more bounce on their sand wedge if they're carrying sort of a four wedge system. Then they've got both options really. So they've got the one that can dig with the lob wedge a little bit more and they've got the sand wedge that can skim. I'm just gonna go ahead, hopefully my launch monitor will pick it up. I'm still gonna go ahead and try and hit that 30 yard shot. 
and see if I can mark towards the back edge of the wedge. Yeah, picked it up. Oh, had a chance of a slam dunk. And again, right at the trail edge there, nowhere near that leading edge, much further back on that white tape, I've got that marking. So I'm starting to use, as I said, the bounce of the golf club there. That's what it's designed to, to do. That's why we have bounce on the golf club. So in my opinion, that's how you should play the majority of your pitch shots, where we're looking for that little bit of elevation. Now, how I have to do that is I'm getting the feeling that I'm allowing the club to catch up with my hands, almost throwing the club. And I've filmed some videos on this before, and I will put some links here that I think are well worth checking out that are gonna reiterate my point today made about using the bounce of the golf club. It's a very simple way. You can see I've hit two pitch shots so far, and I've sort of peppered the pin on both of them. That one uh, is six foot away. I think the first one was about 10 foot um, from a 30 yard shot. Both of them felt very simple, very easy, lots of elevation, lots of height, lots of stopping power. So we want to get that sensation that we're allowing the club to catch up with our hands. And I, I quite often get people to start with a little drill where I'll get them to grip down the shaft, get the feeling of almost getting the grip to point back at their belly button by the time they strike or get to where the golf ball would be. So when I get my club over the, over the top of the golf ball, the end of the grip hits me rather than my handle driving forwards more like a punch shot or a, perhaps a chip and run hitting that ball in lower. So I'm starting to get that club to catch up with my hands. Now the only golfers who muck this up, they're getting the feeling of throwing the club but they're worried about batting it, thinning it. They have their pressure too far back, okay? So they throw the club but they're leaning back at the same time. And then the club hits so far back that hit the equator of the golf ball and the person goes, oh, it bounced into the golf ball. Well, it, yes, it did, but it's because your contact point was way too far back. We're trying to strike the ground a little bit before the ball, at the ball, a little bit after the ball, but not eight, 10 inches before the golf ball, which that strike was. But that strike came about because all my pressure, my weight was on my back foot. So real simple. The only things I want you to think about a setup is get that ball forwards in your stance. So it's three quarters of the way forwards, almost a, a club head's width inside my lead heel. My feet are about three club head's width apart. So don't go really narrow. Get them about three club head's width, keep the ball forwards. But then I want your pressure forwards. So I try and get players to get their sternum, so the buttons on their polo shirt, almost in line with the golf ball. So normally, middle of my stance here, to get over the golf ball, I've got to lean a little bit into my lead leg and try and get my shoulders slightly more level, okay? By the time I grip it, my trail hand, my right hand is gonna be lower than my left, this shoulder is gonna be low, but it's nowhere gonna be this tilt away from the golf ball that I see with a lot of golfers. Often they get that tilt because they push their hands so far forward, so I see this kind of move, hands forwards, right shoulder low, and almost that's counteracting for that. This should help me hit up on it, this should help me hit down on it. It might work, but it's hard, it's very tough. You've got to you've got to work hard with that setup. I would much more prefer to see level shoulders handle back. Okay, so the pressure is forwards, but the hands are back. So three clubs width, ball forwards, sternum over the golf ball, so my pressure's forwards, but you'll see that my hands are more level with the golf club. Now I just get the feel from there that I allow the club to catch up with my hands, almost throwing the club. And then we get good, oh, I didn't pick it up. Then we get good contact, good strike. As I said, we're, the golfer's worried about topping it, thinning it. When they throw the club, their pressure is too far back. So get that pressure forwards, hands back, throw the club. Yeah, got that one. That was my highest yet. You can see it stopped within a foot or two of its landing, of, it, of its pitch mark. So these are all flying about the right distance for the shot that I, I've picked up here. A 30 yard shot and another one to, uh, I can't see how many feet away from the flag, but not far, six foot again. So I'm leaving myself six foot putts on a 30 yard shot. Let's finish with one last one. Nice wide stance, ball forwards, sternum forwards, so it's in line with the golf ball, hands back, get that feel, throw the club, toss the club into the golf ball. And all of those similar trajectory, lots of height, lots of stopping power, 
Got one coming up, a, 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 a probably two yards short. So again, maybe six foot, seven foot, something along those lines. But great elevation, great height, great stopping power. Felt very simple. It's not tough once you start using the wedge correctly. If this video has helped, make sure you hit the thumbs up, share with as many golfers as you can. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, at least two instructional videos a week. Right now, YouTube is suggesting the next video of mine that's relevant for you, and it's just here, so click on it and check it out.